Hi all, and welcome to the Green Tech and Future. Our uh, next presentation will talk about uh, improvements on the on the CDN, for example, not the result of the CDN awesome, but we will also hear about improvements on uh, functionality of our battery tech, uh, data privacy, and finally about user experience and user interface. So first, uh, we're going to hear about uh, and this module called uh, the is awesome, but it's also the first module uh, that really involves a, a performance in the CDN test. So uh, it's, it's done by a Platonic Foundation, and here we have uh, Ivan and Paul. Hello, how are you guys? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. We are glad to be here. <laughs> so we we much uh, much more to say uh, with you guys and yes uh, you have like seven minutes and we have a tight schedule so I'm gonna be really polishing here <laughs> really <laughs> here and there the mess with us <laughs> well, uh, uh, you've been hearing about platonic I guess that means that most of you and we talk about the system of ourselves platonic itself okay so no, we are platonic. Um, we need to talk about how we use and participate uh, using digital tools, okay? Um, when we first encountered the CD, we thought, wow, this is a magical tool, it's powerful, it's so it's hackable and modular, it has funds, no? It's quite good. And uh, the government, the business, the community, okay? And this is the thing. That's the good part, not, I'm not, I'm not here to take the bad, the good, but the bad, okay? So we found like a thousand things bad in the CDN, but uh, at the end, it's just good. I mean, it's so good. Yeah. So it's hard to find a really great developer. Let's not talk about that, but I like that. And the other one is that it is a little biased uh, to a way of doing things, no? especially uh, I just talked about uh, for the city council of Barcelona. So this is a big place with a lot of people that, that need to participate. So we have a, a lot of things that for the scale that we work with, there was mostly a small size organization, huge size, which is not always visible, all, all the features that the student has and, and the way they do those things, okay? So, and let's face it, the student is quite a little bit ugly. And Olivia is here, our boss. He doesn't like uh, ugly things. Okay. Only Xavier. But he's not here. Um, well, uh, apart from that, the scene is very opinionated, okay? Let's just say that it tells the admin how to behave or how to do things, how to manage, manage the users, how not to tamper with the content, and things like that. Okay? Uh, that's okay for a public administration because we need accountability and things, but for the other kinds of uh, little projects, more mid size, it's not always uh, the idea. Okay? So that's why we make the city awesome. Yeah. We have the intention of making the city horrible again. Yeah. Or thank the MDA just for that. Okay? So let's go straight to the end, no? Yeah, we're going to cook a recipe. Okay? We can do it Hello, uh, uh, yeah, uh, from my chef here, I'm your chef, uh, uh, chef of Barcelona and Catalonia and also, so we want to make a tortilla for you. Okay, so what you say? I need, I need a pan, so now I check it. Ah, yes, because, yeah, we make a uh, tortilla, okay, so right. what we need now is a pan. Ah, wait, wait, I have the perfect tool for the job. Okay, so let's imagine that it's yeah. not a uh, destiny. Yes. This one is the CD, so the participatory design is to do the tortilla, okay? But in this case, what we don't have is the okay. baking there, right? Yeah. We can put it here, but you see that in this pan it's too big. So, for example, the, the, the proposals also, maybe, but, uh, I mean, you can put the rice, um, I don't know, my chicken, things like that. You can put a lot of things, but it doesn't fit well. No, uh, so uh, we need we need we need a, 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 a awesome tool to have uh, the correct one. This is the yes. one. But this is I don't know. It feels like it's a little bit too common, right? Yeah, it's really common. I mean, it's everyone, everyone. Like everyone. So 
it's like only we have a good story, we have a reputation, we have our branding, so why don't we put something little? Let's make our own fun, right? This is our own fun. Okay, now it's perfect. So this is why you can, you can use this on my side. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> now I got a proper fun. Not sure to put anything in there, but but wait. The tortilla is goes go with or do we have it? That's no discussion about that, but let's let's I don't know. Participate in the discussion. Why not? Why not? Why not? Oh yeah, what do you think about tortilla? It's with uh, onion or with onion? We go here, so we are using the 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 output uh, tool that is also in you know, so in order to us if we need some help. We are pretty clear about that. We know that that's with onion, but it's a more democratic way. Oh, check cook something, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I want to put this tortilla also with this tortilla, but. We are kind of tired. Look at that. No, really? Look, look, look at that. Yes, yes, no, yes. Come on, Andre. That's not fair. Come on, come on. Come on. Do you know? Here's the receipt. You know, we're getting the soup. We're getting the soup. And, how is it? Where is the soup? Where is the soup? Where is the soup? Where is the soup? Oh, so we also want to bring you the how to say soup. Also, that's what we want to do. We're having it. That's a thing. All right. Okay, that was it. Um, that was a joke, but um, anyway, <laughs> uh, can you put? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty difficult. We perform a really professional thing, like a microphone, like this. You know, we're gonna finish uh, with a big message, but we need to talk a little bit. We need to also think that this video is awesome by itself. So um, let's just put some glitter in it with this video as well. Uh, this is awesome. And I'm just uh, finished with a uh, call because we need a, we're going to make a workshop probably in January. And everyone uh, who wants to tamper with this is awesome, we're going to make a live example, uh, how learn how to change things. And uh, I think it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, how to do with yeah. some models. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. 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 So make this video marvelous again. Thank you all. Also presentation, really funny also. <laughs> Next, we are going to hear about uh, improvements on participatory text uh, made by the people of the Stream Australia, Austria. Uh, they, they are online, uh, couldn't come here uh, to see it first. So I don't know if we can connect to the video conference. So he's going to uh, Ronnie is going to talk about uh, the best modeling text um, and some features that I think they, they are uh, working on, like importing of text, uh, uh, front end development improvements, and exporting results. And uh, they also are going to talk about uh, yes, uh, their experience working with the team and the future for them. Thank you very much for the invitation and the chance to um, present our work to you. Let me just uh, quickly share our screen. So we are um, a team from Austria consisting of four people. My name is Romy Kraskoba-Kerl. I have an NGO background. Um, I'm the initiator of the um, project and uh, have a strong focus on crowd law, participatory lawmaking, which also explains um, our interest in the participatory text feature um, of Decidim. And uh, I'm happy to also represent together with my colleague, uh, Alexander Rusa, our colleagues, Daniel Lechtaler, interaction and communication designer, and Michael Rusa, who is um, our web developer. Yeah, so actually, what did we do? Um, what you can see here is uh, what uh, the participatory text feature uh, looked like before we started to work on it. When I first entered this site, uh, I have to admit I was uh, confused what to do here, because you simply see um, a text 
without uh, anything that tells you um, what to do, no call to action. So it was from our point of view, um, not really in, um, intuitively uh, comprehensible. And uh, that's why we um, decided to work on, on this project. So as soon as you use the mouse over in, in the old uh, Destiny version, um, you, you see the call to action, you see that you can follow, that you can make amendments or make comments. What we wanted is uh, we wanted to put these call to action on the first level so that everybody immediately sees what she or he can, uh, can do uh, on the site. So that's why you can see at your comment, amend proposal, et cetera, here on the first level. Additionally, um, we, we integrated uh, some kind of preview of the contributions of um, other participants. So as soon as you click on comment or amend proposal, you can see on the right hand side uh, what other people wrote. You can see their comments. Um, or, or their amendments. This is something that from our point of view um, can be motivating uh, for others also to contribute. And uh, then there is a last adaption that we made, as you can see here, you can see very prominently numbers, one, three, four. Um, that's because it was obligatory to, uh, to insert titles, so that's the deem actually requires you to, to um, insert titles because it follows the proposals logic. And what we did is um, we, we, we integrated the option to high participatory text titles in order to, to make flowing texts uh, more easy to read. And now my colleague, Alexander Rusa um, will continue. Hi, I'm Alex, the lead developer for this project, and I'll now show you the results of our work. So as Romy already showed you, we improved the front end for the participatory texts. So you can select a paragraph and in the sidebar, you automatically see the amendments listed and the comments. You can reply to a comment or create a new one. But additionally to these changes, we also added a, new, a few new features in the backend. So if you work with participatory texts, you had a button import document where you could import a few version, uh, a few formats for documents like Markdown, but we created a new button called write document. So if you, for example, have the text in form of a PDF and you want to import it here, you could simply copy all the text, paste it into here, and use the formatting to create sections and you could even use real lists and links and so on and if you then import this it will automatically create a section subsection and paragraphs according to the format formatting and another change we made is here with this these drafts you see um, if you, if you created this text and then at this point you saw that it created a new article where it should have just added a paragraph to the article before. In the past, if you save it, the article still exists. And if you want to delete it, it's a required field. It, it just stayed there forever and there was no possibility to delete it at this stage. So we added a delete button to every article, and now you have the possibility to delete drafts. And the last change I want to show you is in the, in the participatory text. If the, the process is over and you got some comments and amendments and so on, and you want to export it, we added a new possibility to add, export everything as a Word document, which results in a Word document like this, where you 
get the titles for all languages and you see the IDs, you get descriptions for all the languages and then it lists every single article, including the count of supports, endorsements, comments. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can also see that it shows also the details for the comments. So every single comment is listed here with indentation for the different levels of comments. And also the amendments get listed here. So you can see the article, then it says amendments, and then you see every proposal that was created and also how much supports it got and so on. So that's the current state of our work. And thanks for your attention. challenge 
which is our talent at uh, Google uh, as companies which install and deploy this thing and maintain it. Uh, basically, the first one is the issue of subcontractors. When we start the team, we start it with a bunch um, of other tools like monitoring, like web traffic, as I said. So we have to be sure that the subcontractors are applying these uh, legal, uh, this legal framework. There is obviously a data processing agreement, which is the official document uh, through which everything is clear with the customer to see about what we will treat and what we will not. And obviously, that's an impact on business processes because we have to talk to the clients to be sure that what he asks us is legal. Yes, that's a good, but sometimes it happens that he asks us, wait, should we reflect this as we, have, as we are an official instance? Yes, you should be legal, even if you're uh, an official instance. Coming with that, we had uh, even like risks or questions that were raised. For example, the question of registration forms. There is some instance who are asking after registration where do you live or where do you work, what is your age, your gender, which are quite sensitive data. Uh, so we have to handle them carefully. Uh, we have to handle also reputation or deletion. Uh, that's mandatory. You have to say at what time you will delete all the data of the platform or give them back to the, to the city. Um, and you have to manage correctly the access to this data, not to use them like uh, uh, sugar sweet industry. How do we, do we need to mitigate it? And we are trying to do so. First, being transparent, it's not zero or one. Uh, there is always room for improvement. So you have to be clear with our clients that we are not perfect. There is room in which we can put more security for more layer of uh, access in order to, to restrain and to reduce the risk of being hacked, basically. Um, a short sentence, you external tools really wisely and uh, if, uh, else internalize everything you can because it's easier when you start post all your monitoring or web traffic tools. And basically, the reason I'm here today is talking with all the different communities and developers about how do they manage uh, this, uh, this problem. I will gladly answer to your question, but after the last observation of my colleague, you can. So uh, now we have Julia uh, uh, and um, Nicole. So uh, they are going to talk about uh, some issues that they found uh, regarding user interface and user experience. And uh, the title of the talk is actually uh, some emotions that Unicorn and Raybon, so really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and maybe also to the other one. So, Unicorn is a rental code. Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Nakuzi. I'm Ryan. And, uh, Okay. So we actually uh, started um, to work on this thing uh, five months ago, maybe, uh, for the instance, instance, because uh, the big instance for one of the, the first political party and for public administration. So uh, we started looking at how we want to customize it for uh, such an organization. So uh, the point was that there are some kind of uh, uh, different things that you uh, have to carry in mind. For instance, we didn't have normal users, but they were German food users. So all the people, all the boomers, uh, activist people, okay. Um, and uh, so we were looking for having uh, big, you know, super huge uh, phones and readability and easy to flow and, uh, and uh, um, and um, and having them uh, to use it seamlessly. So, this was a project uh, that was part of Angola Democratica 
looking at the same as a, uh, as a tool no? uh, to make that kind of design. So in between, uh, we were waiting a lot uh, because uh, even the parties didn't really know what uh, they wanted. So uh, change of requirements so many times, uh, in between we were negotiating a lot for the, uh, for the sign of the, of the things, and you know, a normal IT project. We started studying uh, uh, the CDM from a user experience perspective, okay, so uh, user flows, for instance, just because also we wanted to know better the tools, right, uh, for customizing, obviously. Uh, and uh, we started mapping all the actions, all the red loops, and uh, how to achieve an action, how many possibilities you have to arrive to some point and a goal. <laughs> and uh, this was actually our action. And uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it was, we had some kind of uh, at the initial uh, phase. Then we phased out that, uh, uh, that uh, we understand many rationale of the design the, uh, decisions that we made to, uh, to build the, uh, the city itself. And uh, uh, so we worked on it. And uh, uh, we started to customize it firstly with the UI. Okay, so we put very nice uh, layer pictures, uh, illustrations, uh, nice typography, and blah blah blah. That was the uh, function, I guess. And uh, but um, when we started to, to look at the user interface, uh, actually, we found we had some gatherings, uh, okay? But uh, I, I need to uh, be called to, to show you the differences. And in between, we started to uh, annotate all the things we found when we were uh, really going, let's say, and, uh, and looking uh, at the user flow of uh, the city. Okay, so uh, what, what Puria was saying before is that we try to figure out how the UI works and find the documentation about it, but we didn't really find it. So uh, what we want to leave here is a starting point to develop this kind of documentation so that anyone that does want to use the CDM can understand uh, what's missing and what do they need to start working on this kind of project. So, for instance, uh, we need a clear documentation, as I mentioned now, and a UI kit, and also some process flows already done because the process are already defined, so we just need to give the user the power to use these tools. And now, I don't want to bore you with UI fixes, but I will leave just a few examples of improvements. For instance, uh, what we have here is a proposal, and uh, there are so many actions on this page because we have we, we know typography and all the descriptions, but we also have a lot of a bunch of buttons, and you don't really know what to do on this page. Sometimes you can feel confused. Also, it depends on, on the colors you choose for the buttons. So uh, my my proposal is that to make it um, um, simpler, so we can have just a few CTAs. So instead of having you know four call to actions, we just have two, and one is primary and one is secondary. So this helps the, the user to understand which is the main action I should do on this page. Um, another thing is that we can simplify the cards. Uh, for instance, this is the card for the Agora proposal, and you see there's a lot going on here. And you can imagine that these cards are shown on a page which is very busy, so you have a lot of elements going on on the page. And then you can change something and make it clearer for the user. For our uh, kind of uh, installation, we keep these kind of cards, which are simpler, and the user can understand the title, which 
you call it the most important thing you have to read, and then after uh, all the information with less icons, because we don't really need all the too many icons on simple elements because it will be repeated throughout the page, so we don't really need all these things going on. And then another proposal is a full screen menu because sometimes the navigation is, is difficult. And if we have a lot of pages, we can change, change the menu both on desktop and mobile. Here I will show just some mobile fixes. For example, I made the CTA bigger because it's, uh, it was required for our project. I moved the search bar to the top because it's easier uh, to reach. And then I I put the, the other elements inside. Another thing is very important is that we need to add more labels. For example, when there are so many icons, it would be difficult for the user to understand what, what happens on the page. For example, for a mobile full screen menu, we will need a close button. But not for everyone. I know that most of us know what an app means on a, a program we like, but some people don't. So it's easier to add labels. Um, that's it, and this is the conclusion. I just want to leave the basically with uh, some of the documentation we gathered and we did so that anyone can benefit. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. A really great presentation. Uh, production it has told me that uh, regarding the Green Austria that we lost uh, the participatory uh, text presentation before, they, they are going to uh, upload it to, to Metaverse Team. So maybe in a couple of hours or next week, uh, we will be done with it uh, and see. And then we have time for a couple of questions to any of the great presentations that we had. So if anyone uh, want to ask any question, make any opinion, remark, so on. Yeah, here we can come here. Hey, thanks. Uh, I'm Lucien from uh, Geneva, Switzerland. We also work uh, with, uh, with this team and I am a UX too. Um, what, uh, on, on your perspective, would be the best way to collaborate around UX and versioning? What tools with what design set? I mean, uh, for example, a starting point could be uh, a platform where everything is shown. So it could be uh, be shown on desktop.org website. We can see, we can show all the elements that could be uh, inside this kind of project. The second point for me is to share what I do. So I, we have a UI kit already done and a design system. So it's useful for everyone who's developing the front end to look at all the design system and understand, okay, I should change this, I should change that. And But regarding the UX, that should be from the start. Because otherwise, you don't really know the whole customer journey. So you don't really know where the user is going. So it's important to gather this kind of documentation. Just to comment to Philip here, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but we, we are actually uh, aware of that. In the, let's say that the, the best to be in the time can be really good. Uh, so, like we have a, an issue now that the, the, the software uh, grow really fast and we didn't catch up with all the design problems that you're aware of. So, it's probably it's amazing. I just don't want to say it's bad. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Not. But um, it can be improved with participatory workshops and yeah, yeah, but, but, work. So the, the idea of this is uh, we, we are starting a, a new contract uh, in, uh, financed by uh, the city of Barcelona. And uh, the idea in this contract is that during uh, 18 months, uh, we are going to redo much of the UI. So uh, I don't know the exact Days, but we are planning to open a process so, so everyone can, yeah, we all can gather as a community and, and discuss the features. No? So, yeah, it links also, we will agree about that, but also we, we need to be aware of the limitations and the bugs now, so they are bugs and we need to fix them and that's uh, 
I think it, it, it well to, to discuss these issues now in the open and yeah, collaborative way. We will be happy to join the conversation. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a question uh, for you and also for for the team and the other uh, uh, the other uh, people who's managing this festival this evening because uh, we are in this process of redesigning the city and we have uh, a lot of initial intuitions after our experience managing uh, different uh, applications of the city. We know uh, perfectly our limits, uh, but we are very interested in how. Uh, we can build this in a communitarian way to receive feedback and receive contributions, qualitative contributions from the people who have the experience suffering some of the, our pain that we have inside, but also how we can push these this, this potentialities to, in order to take advantage of the, the, the power that we have in the city in order to, to improve and just to know about your opinion, how we can do this with the contribution of the communities, but uh, not having an experience that everybody's opining like, I have, I believe that we have to, to do this or do that, but just an, an opinionative uh, position, but without, uh, without experience, user experience and test and, and real. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, focusing on the, the real things that, that we have on the, on the platform sometimes. And we just to introduce one of the main ideas that we have in mind is this, this idea to, to, to focus on, 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 the, on the interaction and to put the focus on the. Uh, you have to, you need to have uh, a real interaction with the things that you really can do, not just consume information or, or consume complexity in the media, in the, in the description of the process, in the, a lot of information in the cards. How we can reduce this in order to focus the people on, on the interaction and on the participation, because it's the main thing that we want to do that happens in the platform. And how we can, how we can improve on, on that direction. This is an open question for everybody, but thank you. So, Let's start by if there is no mobile uh, computer shop, so there is mobile uh, uh, with the first account, so if you can explain that to us. So first of all, content and what you want to achieve. Uh, uh, so usually, uh, what matters a lot, uh, what makes it uh, user research, so we gather a lot of feedback from actual users. So we have tests with them, and uh, how uh, we saw how they interact with the, with the platform, where were the problems, where is the uh, uh, missing information, where we can fix something, uh, and so on. So user research is a, it's a, it's a good starting point. That is, there is actually, um, well, in this thing, you see it's a platform that obviously makes some decisions when engineering you know? so it's not designed in a slow uh, way, right? Uh, so there were no designers before this one. So it, it, we try to, to put a, uh, I mean, it's a hybrid thing. Usually you want to start from the design before and then the one, and then put the engineering after, right? But, um, so actually you don't want to really do, uh, change a lot of the process, you know? But what you want to really focus on is the red route, okay? So if you have a special goal, um, uh, you try to make this line on how your user will reach that goal. So to, to allow them to narrow it and having not many places to go around them, uh, but focus on the real important thing. So also the simplified thing that uh, Michael showed you to remove all of non-necessary uh, actions. Okay, after you the feedback. For sure. I mean, it's not that I am deciding that you have to just do this, you know, but you have a main uh, call to action for people. I mean, a couple of things. Uh, or anyway, um, maybe if you have more things, you want to divide the concern. 
so that separates them a little bit. And, um, but, uh, yes, no really a Bible for it. Uh, we're hoping that with the supplement that we're sharing and probably maybe with, uh, with the work that we are doing in the uh, next few months, having something uh, to share with the community in a more structured way, uh, maybe I can prove uh, all the benefits and the inappropriate that we have uh, uh, to help to, uh, I mean, also for an internal team working uh, with some technical support. I think the answer to your question is just ask Google because they don't know, there's never a right answer. Um, so you should ask multiple users at least who are trying to do the video tests. Otherwise, you don't really know what you need to do with the interactions. You just ask the Google to perform something, an action, and see how, like, how the person does it. So it's uh, for an academic video. And I, another uh, idea I have just now regarding the documentation. Uh, why don't we use uh, installation of DCD just for the documentation of the UI, for example, just for design related things? So we can do a custom DCD with just about the results. And if we can have the participatory results test in this way. Yeah, because there is no this design of DCD that doesn't exist, you know, you can use it. Uh, if anyone has another question, comment, yeah. Um, my question is for uh, the previous talk. For uh, Patrice, I don't know if he's still here. Uh, but uh, we 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 work with the National Commission for Public Debate in France, and uh, they are one of the only bodies in France that are heavily regulated by the law on how to do public debates. And since GDPR. Uh, they, ask, they ask us to do this weird thing where uh, supposedly uh, by uh, the, uh, the GDPR import you to pseudonymize data of the users after a while. And we did something, we are not sure it's the right thing, but uh, I was wondering if uh, Andreas or maybe Baptiste, uh, if you have researched a little bit this issue of like not uh, data uh, the right to be forgotten or delete my data because it's kind of the like a social network, but the obligation for public institutions to delete or to pseudonymize or to anonymize data from a public debate after a while. The, 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 the need for uh, to build an archive person which are pseudonymized. Yeah. The parts of the data processing agreement. When you sign with the city or the organization about how you will handle the data, you have to. It has the right to ask these things, and it's also precise. Why, why is it in this document? Because it's precise in the legal framework, the 65 pages framework. You you can read, you can read it uh, about how you handle these data, and as you said, it applies also to public instances. Maybe just you can. What comes to mind for me is, is uh, like a feature regarding uh, the meeting, you know, like like uh, meeting registrations where, where the admins can define forms and so on. So that, that came from when our GDPR auditory that uh, were made a couple of years ago, that they say like, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't need to send the data of really old uh, meetings, you know. It, it's useless because you're not going to use it. So uh, what they say is uh, we, we need to have a way for letting this kind of data. And I, it's not the same for the administration of other elements, I know, but uh, I think it's a good starting point at least to have this frame of mind of, for instance, I don't know, service. We, we really need like really all service that could have uh, potentially uh, participant data, or, or we should do also the same, uh, like practice kind of mechanism. If I can have something by experience, the best thing to do is to talk about it. I uh, like to discuss the fight. I I talk about I talk about uh, community management data. Like if we stay apart, each uh, organization which is implementing the city. Uh, making documentations about how we deal with these issues, which on our side it would be benefit a benefit for the community, and we can gain a lot. Like for uh, the same, I think it's quite the same for designs. If we share 
the common practice in saying we discuss about this. Maybe you, uh, it's quite true we won't be, we won't agree on everything uh, because we both have uh, uh, the same standards about security and so on and so forth. But in the end, we, I think it will be very, very well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, re regarding uh, these last comments about documentation, uh, this last month uh, from the, the Freedom Association, we are uh, really uh, pushing forward, uh, updating all the documentation to, to the last version and also uh, restructuring it because at the moment we have a mixed up between uh, references and tutorials and we need to like uh, have really Separated what's a tutorial, what's a how to, what's a reference, an explanation, and so on. And um, I think uh, this kind of, of document regarding, yeah, like uh, the data processing agreement, or also uh, all the uh, how, how to handle the, 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 the time changes in your own installation and this UI kit and so on. I think uh, that. General documentation of the stream that is available at uh, dot.stream.org uh, should be like the uh, main place to discuss it. Of course, yeah, well, one, one issue that we have here on, on, on Barcelona is that uh, English is, is not the first language for <laughs> any of us. So uh, I think, yeah, we, we need to have this lingua franca because if we have documentation on French and Italian and Spanish or Catalan, it's a mess, you know, it's impossible to compute. Maybe it's a in the next slide. <laughs> so I don't know if we have uh, time for anything else. One more, yeah? So anyone else who wants to make another comment, opinion? Anyone likes uh, our design? We shouldn't change it, no? Sorry, I, I can go again, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I have taken any breaks from the beginning of my space. Um, the question of design governance uh, or governance of a design system is really interesting, especially within the scheme. And um, I mean, it's totally an open question. I'm not sure the scheme is a tool appropriate to address the governance of a design system. Um, because design systems are a little bit like software. You need uh, pushed versioning tools like Abstract or GitHub or whatever to federate the decisions by the code today. So just a thought. I don't know. It keeps you going somewhere. Thanks. <laughs> So we are wrapping up. Uh, next, we'll have uh, some people, Mark Serra, I think, from Barcelona City Hall. Uh, and he's going to uh, present uh, the different innovations that were made in Barcelona in the last couple of years. Thank you, guys.